you have a goalie like that, Bob Roski was like that too, and still is, right? If you have that goalie, then that really is kind of priceless. If you have a goalie that you can just sit back there in in net and then not have to worry about that for the next couple of years, because what is the most major position in hockey yeah. that is the most sought after, the most argued over, the most, <clears throat> you know what I mean? It's goalie, right? Yeah. And if you can just, okay, I'll pay him 10 mil a year. I don't have to worry about it for the next six years. And I got a Vesna trophy freaking goalie back there all day long. Okay, cool. I'm good with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when they, when they signed Bobrovsky, when I said it, I was like, I don't know how good Bobrovsky really is because it's just like Barry Trotz and Tortorella, their system props up goaltenders. Is yeah. Corpus Allo going to be as good if he's playing for the Florida Panthers? No. No. Uh, that's the hard part. Now, Carey Price is on a different level altogether. Paying him $10 million a year is understandable because he can win you. But even him, like I agree – with the cap space, how are you going to fill out your roster when you're paying your goaltender $10 million a year? And that's the hard part. And the fact of the matter is goaltenders are are a little easier to find, although carry prices aren't. And so not just it, that. The, uh, there's a, the lot, amount there's of years, a lot of an argument. Yeah. The amount of years they gave carry price to was a bit much. If they went yeah, a little shorter, if they went a little shorter and, and still gave him that 10.5, like – He's a good goalie, and if he has like what he played against the Edmonton Oilers on Saturday, if he continues what he does there, and it continues to be stone cold, then yeah, he's worth that ten point five million dollars without a doubt. Just the years are going to kill them in the later on parts when price is uh, declining a bit, um, unless he's going to be like a Pekka Rene or a Henrik Lundqvist, where he'll be able to go up until he's thirty eight and put up some consistent years. But even then, you're 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 betting. Yeah, it's it's a t- it's an interesting conversation, and you can make an argument for both sides. Because right now, what other there aren't too many goaltenders in the league you could put in Montreal and say they're a cup contender. Mm-hmm. But because yeah. Price is in Montreal, they're a mm-hmm. cup contender, right? Yeah. yeah. So well, you're paying them ten million dollars a year, but now you're a cup contender. I mean, you could look at. Uh, I don't know, take Corpus Allo out of Columbus and put him in Montreal. Are they a cup contender? No. No. Right. So. And that, that's the problem. Goaltending is hard to find. Like, it, it really is. Like, especially uh, as an Oilers fan, like, the, seeing multiple goalies go through your system over years and people telling you, this is the next guy. This is going to be the next big goalie. Happy Bulin's going to Edmonton. Holy crow. And yeah. And he gets injured and absolute plays like crap. Um, it, it's hard to find a good goalie that that will give you consistent games and that will be worth that contract that you give them. The thing I always find is free agency is always the worst thing for goalies. It's like devil's advocate for goalies. It, it, it when you are on a team, defense either makes you or break you as a goalie. You either play mm-hmm. really well, like Vasilevsky. I guess if you were to look at his analytics. You could say he gets carried a lot by Tampa Bay's defense because of the fact that they have Hedman there and his analytics don't look as great as compared to other goalies in the league who face a higher volume of shots in the league. Like Mika Koskinen's about average in the league for goalie stats because of the fact he faces a lot of shots because the other's defense plays like crap most nights. So he faces a high deal of scoring chances and um, pucks to the net. Do you guys realize that we just basically did a show here? Oh, you uh, don't stop because I already hit record. <laughs> yeah, just I was waiting for going. him to notice. <laughs> just keep on going, guys. So okay. yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, if we I look said at I the was last, gonna do it. I said I was going to do it. This is when we got to record. I don't care what the opening is or whatever. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. No, no. I. I just I don't think it's going to be. I think it was a lot to put on the shoulders of the goalies. Mm-hmm. to come out of the gates with because Florida is starting off without Bob. Dallas is starting without Huboden. You know what I mean? And then Blackwood has played really well, but there was a lot of pressure put on him too. You know what I mean? And I, I think Carter Hart was a standout as well too. And then you look at like what happened with, with Pittsburgh. Okay. And, and neither one of their goalies has played really all that well either. You know what I mean? And, and 
I, I just with without having all that money going to a goalie, but but see, look, I, I'm I'm still that old school, man. I'd much rather pay the guy and not have to worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. if I don't have to look, how long has a team like Philadelphia been clamoring for a freaking goalie? Yeah. Right now we have a goalie and yeah. now you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. All right. You're gonna, you can build the team in front of them. How, mm-hmm. how much is he going to, how much do you think he's going to get paid, John? Hart. Yeah. He, he'll he be up there. Would Vasilevsky get nine and a half? Yeah. Nine and Vasilevsky's at nine or nine and a half a year, I think. For his second contract? Yeah. yeah. They committed long-term to Vasilevsky and he did the I... cup. Well, Vasilevsky went short with his first contract. Mm-hmm. I think, unless depending depending on the cap situation, like if they have a lot of money, I'm pretty sure um, Philly would lock him up. But for his first contract, I'm pretty sure they would just go cheap. That's what I was going to say. I don't think he's going to get that big giant contract out of the gates, especially with Philadelphia being a little bit tight up against the cap in the next two years. I think he's looking at like a bridge deal. Like well, if a, he gets a, if he gets a bridge deal, you're probably looking at five, five and a half. What's that? Five and a half. Six. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like five, mm-hmm. five and a half mil for two for two years, right? And then after two years, then we'll get you the big one. And then well, watch out. You're going to when be sitting at 12, 13 million by that time. Yeah, if, that's going to be the thing. If the cap goes up after the next couple of years, you're going to you're going to be looking at if for you're going to be looking at eight years, eighty million for Carter Hart. I agree. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Oh, but yeah. I don't think he's going to get that right out of the gate, though. If you like, can get him for eighty million, oh, eighty million, that'd be ten million dollars. That'd be a year. ten million. I ten million cap, a year. Personally, yeah, if I, I could get him for eight million at. right now. Now, and if he's willing to sign for the full eight, yeah, I'd freaking do it because you're, you're going to be saving so much money. Man, the there's such time. a difference between Vasilevsky and Hart. Like, I think it might be a little bit of a definitely the 80 million for 10 years. You might even see a little bit more for Hart just because of the fact, like, the numbers he's been putting up. Um, last year, he had a 914 in his second season, which is pretty <sighs> good for a save percentage. Vasilevsky was even better in the playoffs. Vasilevsky in his second year put up a 9-10 and only had 11 wins compared to Hart who had about 24 wins. Vasilevsky yep. in his third year started doing good and his fourth year really exploded as a goalie. But already Hart started off the year with a banger already having a 9-25 this year. So I Carter Hart might be up in the level as Carey Price, I would say. Um, uh, I think he's going to be, yeah. But I think, I think Vas- Vasilevsky is going to be right up there too. Price Price got paid six and a half, I think, for his first contract. If I'm correct, you might be seeing around the same for Carter Hart if yeah. he's going to continue to put up the same amount of numbers he's going to be putting up. You might be seeing Carter Hart with his first contract taking like six and a half. Depends on the term as well. Like if it's for two years, you might see him take a a cheaper. Uh, cheaper salary um but you might see him around that seven million dollar range if he continues to put up the good numbers if he wins the vesna trophy this year then i yeah. guarantee you then i guarantee oh, you that his next contract will not be a bridge deal yes yeah, so no lock him up uh, long term yeah. right okay if price he doesn't first win deals. the vesna this year if he doesn't win the Vezas this year, then he's going to get a bridge deal that's going to be like five, six million for the next two years until the cap goes up because the Flyers are 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 going to be tight. I mean, we're not up against the cap space, but the Flyers have about I think it's a little over two million or something like that. You know what I mean? And depending on how things go next year, uh, because we know that the cap is going to stay flat for the next year. You know what I mean? So we're going to have to have some guys drop off the books or we're going to have to have some trades happen if we're going to try to think about paying him, you know, any kind of major bucks next year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're going to have to lose guys. I would lose Voracek before, I, you know, to give him the money that's going to keep him there. Well, they're going to look to try to lose like uh, – JVR. Or yeah, they got to try and get rid of that JVR. I, I still right? say you got to staple a first to JVR to get rid of him. It's the only way you're getting rid of him. Unless he has a great year this year. He did score one goal. Yay. But, I mean, if he has a great year this year, but if he keeps on going the way he's been going, it's the first round I think, pick. Well, I mean, him. if he retain a little bit of his money, it, I, 
well you have to with it you're you gonna have, have to, to with him like that seven million dollars when he signed it i was like yeah eh, this is not a good deal <laughs> Um, JBR is a, he's a decent goal scorer, but that that's all that's, he really does. That's all he does. He, like that's, he'll pot you twenty five goals, and that's it. Four yeah, million a year for him. If he gets twenty, he's terrible defensively. He's just, uh, his yeah. analytics don't say he's too too bad defensively. Yeah, I mean he's not bad. He is a net front presence. He has some good speed up the wing. He's able to make those good passes. He has good vision. He's, he's a good he third is line. Capable of scoring twenty goals a season. Yeah. He's a good power play third yep. line type of player, but he's not worth seven million dollars. No, that those Ooh. guys should be like five mil. Right, four or five at the best. I was right. gonna say I was gonna say something back to goaltending again. Also, the difference between Bobrovsky and Price is Price. Montreal built their system around Price. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bobrovsky is being brought in from another organization. Oh yeah, that's true. That is completely not. Yeah. We're, that's ludicrous to bring in a goaltender for t- that much money. And Florida is not a cap team either. Right. It, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that it's a little different. I can understand the Montreal for price contract more than the Bob Brofsky yeah. contract for a goaltender. When you're bringing in a goaltender, I know he had two Vesnas, but again, you're doing it in a very t- tight you, system. Yeah. But they're yeah, bringing you, him down I, there also to be a name there yeah. because Florida is not a big market. I that, know yeah. what I mean. I'm just wondering, just wait a sec before you go on. Have you ever think that maybe Tortorella is starting to try to get himself pushed out so he can go work with Zito in Florida? Well, they already got <laughs> Quenville there, so I don't know. Yeah, don't they got Quenville. Yeah. I don't think Quenville's going anywhere. No. no. Co- coaching certainly not Quenville. the issue in Florida. I always if, forget that Quinville's in Florida. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how Florida does. Well, this I really think. I, I really think with what. Even though they do have Bobrovsky and 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 John, we touched touched on this on our show. They've got two really awesome, uh, talented goalies coming up through the system. Uh, that's going to be knocking on 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 Bobrovsky's door next yeah. year. Oh yeah, and, and oh, it's Levi ama- and Knight, or- right? And so I think that's what's going to really affect Bob going for. I mean, you know, not this year obviously, but maybe next year or the year after, where you're going to start seeing the you know. Uh, Spencer coming in or Levi coming in and, and pushing for that second spot there. You know what I mean? So and, it's going to be interesting to see how Bob's contract is going to be where it's not as a team friendly deal as more Carey Price's deal was more of a team friendlier deal where it was a little less money, but this is also not his, you know, this is not his first big contract for price. Yeah. You know, this is just an extension and he's already made his bucks He's already had his big whammy contract. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? He, he's at that point now where he's just maintaining, right? Where, where you're looking at Carter Hart coming out to get that big whammo contract is going to be his next, either not this contract, but the next contract for him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why I think the difference is with Carey Price having a much more team friendlier deal than with Bob. I think they were bringing him down there because number one, they need somebody on the marquee. Number two, Bob's a a, a well known Vesna Trophy winning goalie who can pretty much backstop anything. And and if you pay him enough money, guess what? I don't have to worry about it now. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and the they, thing about uh, Florida too, um, last year their defense looked. So terrible. bad. Yeah, it was terrible. Atrocious defensively. I think the only two good defenders that they had on their team was Uyghur and Ekblad. And Mackenzie Uyghur's analytics actually look really good. Now, this year, I, I would have to say they, they improved a little bit, picking up New Tavaro and Gudas, like I was talking about in my review one. Um, they're deep as well, defensively as well. They got a lot of depth, guys. Did they pick up Forslin on the waivers, too? Orsaline, what I got from Chicago a while back, he, and but they're but they're playing. He beat out he beat out Stillman. I was yeah, surprised. I seen that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Stillman had a really good uh, season last year, especially yeah. with his uh, uh, analytics, and um, didn't look like too bad. But I guess Forsland played a lot of a better game than because he's playing alongside Shrawman as well, from what it looks like. Yeah, Gudis being down there too has helped solidify their defense a little bit more, giving them more of a, uh, a veteran presence back there, a little bit more of a calming presence. He's also really good on the PK too. You know what I mean? So um, that was something that they've added there. But good luck, Florida. 
It's going to be a long year for you guys. I just I don't think free agency is the best way to get a goaltender. No, agree. Look at let look at the last four. Well, Pittsburgh won it twice, but look at the last four Stanley Cup winning goaltenders: Andre Vasilevsky. Who was he drafted by? Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Yeah. Jordan Bennington. Who was he drafted by? St. Louis. Yeah. Braden Holtby. Who was he drafted by? Washington. Yeah. Washington. Matt Murray. Who was he drafted by? Yeah. Pittsburgh. Penguins. Yeah. yeah. The last and Pitt, he won it with Pittsburgh the year before. So really, the last five Stanley Cups, the team that won it had a goaltender that they drafted as their. That's why. Goaltender. That's why it's really good to draft a goalie almost every year when you go into the draft. Like the way that the Oilers have been doing it with how many goalie prospects we have in our system is absolutely nuts. Like we have Rodrigue, Skinner, Wells, and Kunavala, four mm-hmm. goalie prospects that look. Some of them look meh. Some of them look fantastic. But you definitely need the draft to get that good goalie and to build around. Because if you get somebody from free agents, Edmonton did that. When? Oh God! Since like Tommy Solo, like. Oh my gosh! Yeah, a long Uh, time ago. I think I I think that was the (laughs) last time that we actually had a. Oh no, he was drafted by New York Islanders. So no, um, Tubi. Dubnik, but I mean, he never oh, panned out. He never yeah. really made it with Edmonton. Okay, but yeah. we're talking yeah, yeah, Grant yeah, yeah. Fear. Grant Fear <laughs> was the last time we actually drafted and developed a goalie. And it yeah. actually, oh, actually, and Bill Ranford as well. Bill Ranford, you can't forget yeah. about him. As well. And when was the last time we won a cup? Those Bill guys Bill Ranford. Were, and then... <laughs> <laughs> Those guys were here. Yeah. So but there like, you go. Yeah. Look at Boston. When Boston won their cup, they, they drafted Tuka Rask, right? Yep. Yep. Right? Oh, no, Tom. Tim oh, Thomas had, uh, was the was Tim the goal. Thomas. T- Thomas absolutely stole those entire playoffs. He did. Okay, okay. Uh, Tim Tim Thomas was the second got, most impressive. Yeah. But Flurry was, was a, drafted by the Penguins. The, Tim right? Thomas was, he won cups with them. You know what I mean? So yeah. Flurry was a first overall pick by the Penguins. Exactly. Exactly. First, first Crawford Penguins. Crawford won thirteen and fifteen with Chicago. And he was drafted by Chicago, right? There you go. Yeah. Chris, so. Chris Chris Osgood with Detroit was drafted. Detroit, yep. That was Jonathan another good one. Quick was Brodeur, drafted didn't, by Brodeur wasn't, but, didn't New Jersey draft Brodeur? Yeah. Yes. Here's another question. When did yeah. you ever really see like a goalie trade, like a goalie blockbuster trade? If you would look back at history, like that, there's not that, a lot Patrick of goalie Waugh, trades. When he Patrick left Montreal Waugh, yeah. to go to yeah, that's Colorado, Colorado won with the trade. That's right. They won yeah, with the draft goaltender. There's one. Yeah, yeah. there's one. There's but one. I think that there's a, it's goalies. You don't see them being traded very much. Like the the goalies are a hot commodity, especially with the waiver wire right now. Um, mm-hmm. And goalies flying all over the place. Wasn't Javi Bulin the co- to, when Tampa won the cup? Yeah. Yep, he was, yeah. he, was, he was drafted by Tampa too, right? Yeah. yeah. But and, and Hashik was drafted by Buffalo, right? No, yep. he was drafted by Chicago. Yeah, oh, he was, he was, oh, yes, he was drafted right. by Chicago or yeah, he was drafted by okay. Chicago. Okay. And they, they, have... they were try, they tried to change his style and they said, "Well, he's just they they even said he was pretty much just getting lucky." <laughs> and they they traded him in a way to Buffalo. Oh my God! Oh, did can did you Chicago imagine? have Eddie Bell for at the time, and that's why? I think, I, yeah, I think they, they did. I yeah, think they, they were, did. They were doing yeah, good yeah. goal already too. Because but. that was right at the end of Grant Fuhrer's run in Buffalo. Yeah, yeah. When that so, trade, when all that went down, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were they were doing okay, but Eddie was getting a little older, I think, because he went to Dallas after that. He right? went to Dallas after that. Yeah. And, he won in um, 99. So there yeah. you go. But Dominic ha- the, the Hashik never won a cup. And there's, okay, Detroit did win a cup with an undrafted goaltender because they won with Hashik. Oh. Yeah. But, Hashik, but, the, yeah. But, they, they but they, but they, but they did win with uh drafting goaltender with Ottawa. Also, Hashik almost won with Ottawa as well there. Yeah. Oh, at the, uh, at the end there. Yeah. Um, in yeah. 07. Who Anaheim won with? Uh, oh, was Jaguar still that? Jaguar was, was still their goalie in 07 when they won. Yeah, they and, and wasn't Jonathan Quick? Wasn't he drafted? He was by, drafted yes. by the, the Kings. Kings. Yeah, yeah. He's got that. cups. Yeah, right. He won two. Yeah. yeah, and that's all of them, right? That's everybody who's won. Recent, like, in, last, in, recent, in, the last in, like yeah. 20 the most, years, yeah, the 30 most, years. Last, 
last 20 years. Uh, <laughs> Gosh, it's like we know hockey or something. Teams draft your draft your goaltender. Don't try and find them in free agency. No, so that, that's why I said, let's go to this year. Who did I say that these guys should have picked? Askarov. Yeah. For that reason, because yeah. you got to draft your goaltender. And he's he looks like he's going to be in the same. Nashville. Watch out yeah. for Nashville here in these next couple of years, man. They they got a good they got a good couple of young players that they got coming up the system for themselves. If Tolavinen actually starts playing who he was expected to be, Nashville could be a very good team. Well, yeah. David Poyle probably added another ten years onto his existence as a general manager. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> well, the, th- the thing about goalies too is you don't you can nab them in the later rounds, and how many fourth, fifth, sixth round goalie picks have actually turned into being like really good goaltenders? Pekka, Re- Pekka Rene, two hundred fifty eight. <laughs> yeah. Like you can there nab you a go. goalie in the late rounds that turns into an absolute superstar. Exactly. Well, you don't see that as much with like skaters as much as goaltenders. You know what though? You know why I think that is though, John? Because I think a lot of it has to do with look. It's a lot easier to skate down the ice and shoot a puck into a net than it is to basically put all that padding on, all this equipment, and you're not even skating around. I mean, you're just mm-hmm. standing there, you know, and it's all a lot of mental toughness too. And you oh really yeah, can't, you can't you can't um, scout mental. You can't yeah. like you can't go inside their brain and see how they think during a hockey game. It's it, it's a tough it like it's tough being a goalie because like you'll see like for like on Sportsnet all the time they'll show like Frederick Anderson showing his pregame and he's looking around getting laser focused and ready for the game. Like, it is a different mental toughness that goalies need to go through in a different regiment that they need to get ready to go out there and, and get ready to save some pucks. In some it, cases, you can tell, though. Like, Carter Hart, you could tell from the time he was a kid. That guy oh, was yeah. just stupid. Like, mm-hmm. his mental, he never let anybody shake him ever. Like, I, that's why I was always touting him when he was younger. I was like, this guy, I have no I, you don't, he doesn't let anything shake him at all. Like, he never but, looks upset. But sometimes you can read, it's like, incredible. for example, remember Justin Pogge? Like, everyone mm-hmm. was yeah. saying such high things about him. He's going to be the next big thing for Toronto, and then he's in AHL Europe, right? So the same well, thing. Like Jake Allen was kind of the same way when yeah, he first yeah. came in with St. Louis. Jake Allen was going to be. That's the world juniors for you, though. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The world well, now juniors. We got, first, now yeah. we got two other goalies now. That really showed out really well in the World Juniors. One of them was a a, a, a gold medal uh, winner, and the other one was a silver medal winner. And they're both playing for Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see what happens with that floor, with that uh, second one. But well, I mean, don't forget the Amer- uh, Yeah, or sorry, the American is what you're talking about, Spencer Knight. I, I would put him, uh, and then Levi yeah. from Canada. Levi from yeah. Canada, silver medal. He's also he's the second goalie that they have down there in Florida. Levi is so weird because he was playing in single A like yeah. last oh my God. year. It he's so weird. So fast. It's crazy. Yeah. But he's it, really good. Yeah. He is. He's it's it's weird. Like, cause like I, I've always kind of like watched the, the Canadian university hockey there. And usually like none of the players usually never turn out to be anything. It's usually mm-hmm. just like kind of like beer league hockey practically. But <laughs> Levi, Levi, the numbers he put up like a 941 and barely oh, lost man. any games throughout that entire wow. year. And then he came, he came out of nowhere for the Team Canada roster and put up a 964 in those seven games. And played great against the Americans as best he's uh, as best he could. Mm-hmm. When yeah, yeah, Canada yeah. was playing like crap, but that I I don't know what's the future for Levi, but man, it, it's high right now, especially after the the World Juniors and that University Hockey. We'll have to see if he can play higher hockey though. That yeah. would be the biggest question. World Juniors, like you could get hot and you could go throughout the entire tournament and be like a Justin Pogi. But in the end, who knows what might happen once you get into the AHL or NHL. That's true. That's true. Yeah, Goaltender yeah. development, too, is so interesting to watch. It is. Because a lot of them take a lot longer to develop than you would originally think. Like Jordan Bennington was in the AHL for years. Yeah, I was just going to mention him. like 26. Wasn't he in the ECHL? Yeah, he was down in the ECHL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was down in the ECHL. He played in the AHL. And then he just breaks through at like, what, 26 or 27? As, as a call-up. 
Yeah. Hey, we need you today. <laughs> they were saying that the whole time though they were they were saying that it was a maturity issue, and he's an arrogant kid, and he just rubbed people the wrong way, and all of that kind of stuff like that, and he didn't listen. Like mm -hmm. he, he thought he was better than everybody. So it's hard to coach somebody like that. Yep. And they were, they were really trying to work with him to, to, to mature because he had all the tools, right? Yeah. And here he comes in the NHL and he's still arrogant, but he's, they've worked, they've, they, I think they should have brought him up faster and had the NHL players kind of tune him in a little bit more myself. Mm -hmm. But who am I to say? I don't know. Yeah. But it's not start. too bad to have like a a season where you jump in, you you get your ego going. It makes you play a little bit better. You win that first Stanley Cup, which it, it definitely drove up Jordan Bennington's ego up big time when he won that cup, big big time. And then <laughs> just the a next, scares. the next yeah. year, like he definitely did struggle. But like, he, who knows what might happen this year? Because wasn't he in that eight nothing game where he got absolutely pelted? Yeah, but he was also there. in. He, he was, was also in the four one win. But, win. Yeah, but St. Louis, St. Exactly. Louis didn't play very well. I was watching a bit of that game against Colorado. They were playing really sloppy. They weren't playing yeah. really good against yeah, Colorado. Yeah. Actually, Colorado. Colorado didn't play well. The first one in St. Louis no, played the yeah. best game. And the second mm -hmm. game, Colorado came out heavy. Yeah. And St. Louis went back on their heels and couldn't yeah, get back, ready. Couldn't yeah, get off ready. of them. I had freaking, what did I, did I have? I had the under on that freaking game. That's right. And Colorado scored every freaking goal. And <laughs> well, so much for that. <laughs> it was under six. It was yeah, under that, six. yeah, eight zip. <laughs> also, the thing with the goalies too, I, I like when I always hear like people talk about goalie prospects, they'll talk about them being sent down to the East. ECHL is like a bad thing for goalies. I don't think it's that bad of a thing. Uh -huh. I think it's a great developmental trick. Mm -hmm. You send them down the ECHL to boost their confidence, to kind of like play some good games down there. You call them back up to the AHL when they have that confidence, when they have a little bit of that ego going. You gradually throw them up in the NHL. Like all the goalies, I think they did it with Dylan Wells and Stuart Skinner last year for the Edmonton Oilers. They were struggling with the AHL club because our Bakersfield uh, Condors were struggling last year. So they just stepped him down in the ECHL, and they started doing way better down there. It's it's I heard uh, it's especially even good with the forwards and defense when they're struggling up in the AHL. They'll down into the ECHL. They produce a little bit, get a little bit more of that confidence going, develop. That's how you get. That's how you get those guys that do it. Even like if you're sending them down from the NHL to the AHL, you know what I mean? Because you're trying to build their confidence and give them. And that's why I think it, it does. It's it's kind of a double edged sword, because they're going to get may, way more playing time in the lower leagues mm -hmm. than they are going to get up here. But I'm sending you down. Because we need you to work on some things. You know what I mean? So it's kind of a double-edged sword. Okay, yeah, they're sending me down, but hey, I get to play more. Mm -hmm. So, like, what do you want? You know, do you want to, well, you know... Obviously, yeah. you want to be up with a big club, but you need to be better so you can be with a big club. You know what I mean? Well, I thought it worked wonders for Montreal when they sent Kokaniemi down last year. He yeah. had a brutal, brutal start to the NHL season. They sent him down. He was like a point per game down in the A. Yeah. And then he came back up for the playoffs with Montreal. And he didn't, I mean, he had four goals. He don't, Those were his only four points. But I just thought he looked so much more engaged and so much more of a factor in the game yeah. when he came back up in the playoffs. Well, Kokaniemi has an opportunity to be like a Miku Koigu type player, like if he if if he's able to get his full capacity, mm -hmm. and uh, he just seems to was struggling with whether he was going to be an offensive player and a defensive player, and we're like, no, we want you to be both. So go down to the AHL, where you have a little less competition, and focus on um, finding the balance in both two way not, hockey, yeah. not losing one because you're doing the other. We don't want you to be just a great defensive center, which he could be. He's very smart defensively. We want you to be two ways. So he went down to the AHL and you have a really good point because it doesn't always work, he, which shows his maturity level too. He didn't take it as a demotion or anything. He handled it very well yeah. and went down there. Great. And a lot of young players they can't get their head wrapped around the fact well, that they get sent down 
You know what I mean? And, like, and, it, and then they'll <laughs> also have to deal with the Montreal media, too, with Konkan and Ami yeah. when he got sent down. Like, the Montreal yeah. media just was tirading the kid. It was just tirading him. Like, just... Uh, and, and and that's the thing too like media will have such a huge effect on prospects too like if you struggle like especially toronto prospects i feel oh, bad yeah. if you Toronto's play in toronto brutal. and you're developing like a nicholas robertson he put up like one good season down the ohl and every toronto fan is praising him like he's jesus down there <laughs> yeah and like <laughs> if he doesn't perform it's going to be the end of the world for those yeah. toronto fans <laughs> can't prop guys up like that and then expect them to to, to continue on you know another um great experiment was scotty lawton for the flyers they mm-hmm. sent him down uh to the ahl for a good portion of like one of his seasons and he did exactly the same thing he didn't take it as a demotion and he was able to improve his game so that when he came back up well, man, now look at what he is. He's like the Swiss Army knife for the Flyers. He can play up and down your lineup. He can be the wing. He can be the center. He can be that fourth line energy guy. He can be a checker. He can play on your yeah. penalty kill. I mean, you know, it really improved his game. Mm-hmm. That's how. That's the way I look at it with the on uh, dry sidle. I remember the oh, one. It was point. really. It was really stupid the way that they did it. I wish they did it a little bit different. But they played him for like thirty games and then sent him down, which of course kicks in his entry level contract, which was stupid by the GM to do. But he went down to the WHL, ripped up in Kelowna, won the championship down there, came back to Edmonton, and the rest is history, right? Like you, you sometimes got to kick your player in the ass to tell him yeah. to like either you Absolutely. smarten up. Or you're going to be playing down here in the minors for the rest <laughs> of your career, making 80 grand a year. Or you could be playing Fine up in the bus. NHL, making $8.5 million and doing whatever you want. I think you'd much rather go with the $8.5 million and ride in first class instead of riding the, the bus. The bus. Yep, you yep. know, classic <laughs> AHL bus. <laughs> Wouldn't want to ride the bus now. <laughs> Okay, oh, I'm going to no. give her a stock here now. It's at about a half an hour. So that was freaking awesome, though. See, I said I was going to do <laughs> that sometime. Talk and it turned into a video. 